So I published this video yesterday about integration testing and kind of walked you through how you can potentially do it. And I got a pretty good comment from Dylan Elins. I don't know if I said that right, but every time I see a video about integration testing in the TypeScript ecosystem, I am grateful for the Laravel testing ecosystem. Do you really have to hit a local endpoint when testing the Git functionality of a user? In Laravel, we usually use insert a mock user into the database using a factory. Curious about your thoughts on this. And so he brings up a good point. Basically, if you didn't watch the previous video, I have an integration test that is checking to make sure that when I hit the Git endpoint, I get back a user who should exist in the database. It's a pretty straightforward test. But the thing he's asking about is in order to set up my database, I do a post request first to insert the user, and then I do a Git request right after it to verify that I can get the user back. So I'm kind of testing two endpoints in an attempt to just verify the Git on the user's endpoint. And I think what he's asking is why can't we just do like a DB insert and directly insert a mock user such as Billy Ray into the database directly here. And then we can have the test hit the endpoint and make sure that we do get back the expected user um, that we just inserted. And I will say that this is a valid way that you can write your integration test, but I do think there's one caveat with this, which can cause a maintainability nightmare as your project gets a little bit larger. So I'm gonna go over to Eraser and diagram this out a little bit so I can help explain it. But if you guys have a different opinion on this approach, let me know. So this is our API that we're trying to test out, okay? And when you write out integration tests, from my perspective, the point of an integration test is to allow you to easily test the inputs in the outputs of this API without knowing the implementation details of how this API works, right? Do we care if this is using Drizzle ORM? Not really. Do we care if this is using Laravel? Probably not. Should we care if there is a Postgres or a MongoDB or a DynamoDB database that this thing is actually using behind the scenes when we try to do things on this API? Again, I would say probably not. So the point I'm trying to hit on here is that when you have an end-to-end -end or an integration test suite, you have to decide where is the layer that you're going to have a clear separations of concern, right? Your tests, do they need to know about the ORM you're using, the database that you're using, other things that this API might need? In some cases you may, and that's when you have to like basically mock out with feature flags or mock out with like test configurations. But in most cases, I would say if you can keep the clear separations where the integration test just needs to know about the API endpoints and that's it, you're gonna have a much more flexible, resilient set of integration tests. So going back to this test case, what is it doing? Well, I need to test the Git user's endpoint. But the only way to verify a user comes back from the database correctly, like we're persisting something all the way to the database and coming back, is by hitting this open endpoint over here. So in my opinion, this whole thing is a black box. Integration tests should not know about it. And the only way we can actually inject this data is to hit an endpoint first. And then later we can do a Git request to get back the users by some type of like ID. Now, the only downside that I think you can argue is that in order to test out a simple endpoint, you now have to test out multiple endpoints. And if you want to set up your database or your system in a particular state, you will probably have to hit a bunch of different endpoints to get all that data created. Now, from my perspective, this is pretty good because now you're hitting a bunch of realistic endpoints to get a system into the proper state versus if you don't do it this way, you're gonna bypass your entire API and you're gonna be running either application code, ORM helper code, or running SQL statements to seed your database and inject mock data slash seed data, or I don't know, ORM application logic. So now all of your integration tests are highly coupled to whatever you're using here. If it's Laravel, now your tests have a bunch of knowledge about Laravel. And so if you decide that you wanna start splitting off certain endpoints from like a microservice perspective, and maybe you wanna have a different API, maybe you wanna have like a, a user's API, this could be like a product's API, right? And the user's API team decides that they wanna use Go, okay? And that's gonna have a whole separate database. Maybe they're gonna just use SQLite to store your users because why not? Now your integration tests will not work because you have to rewrite all your integration tests because you were testing at an implementation detail level of Laravel in Postgres, when instead you should have been testing at the endpoint level so that it makes refactoring much easier in the future.
Now, the only reason I'm very adamant about this standpoint is because I'm on a project at work. It's like half a million lines of code and we have thousands of integration tests. And the way we wrote our integration tests, they very much depend on implementation details. And when you reach, you know, 500, 1000, 2000 integration tests, it becomes impossible to refactor away unless you spend a ton of your developer time trying to swap out the way that you're setting up the seed data or swap out the way you're doing the mocks, which is why I'm saying I would never really do this in an integration test. I would not access your database directly and I would not try to run any type of custom application code that your application depends on, your business logic depends on when trying to set up your users. So let's say your test does require setting up the database in a particular way. You can still make a utility function. So for example, create mock user. And this is just a little helper function that takes in the express app and also the user data that you might want like this. And we can just go ahead and invoke that over here. And so this is what it would look like if you're using that helper utility, which would create that mock user. And again, you may argue that this is good enough because your integration tests at least have one layer of abstraction about how those mock users get created. And inside of this, you could potentially call the ORM directly, or you could call one of your endpoints. I guess in the end, doing something like this could make your code base a little bit more maintainable because now instead of this needing to know about your ORM or your database, it actually just depends on some random utility that you could easily refactor away. But again, I like the idea of just hitting your public endpoints to test out features that you need. You know this is easier said than done. There's some instances where you do have to set up your database to have certain table rows or have certain data that's preceded. I'm not saying you should never do it, but at the very least, you should wrap it in one layer of abstraction so that your actual test files don't know about your business logic or your database of choice. And additionally, I would try to avoid it unless you truly need to. I have seen many, many integration tests which know way too much about your application code and understanding the code becomes even more challenging because if you want to create a mock user and you decide that you want to refactor how the user table is, like it breaks basically all your tests. You have to go through all your tests and make sure that you include whatever additional fields you needed when you're creating that user in your Postgres or your ORM call. When in reality, you should be able to refactor anything inside this black box without you having to touch a single integration test. As long as the public facing contract didn't change, your code should be refactorable. Now this argument does not apply to unit tests. Unit tests usually always need mocks and stubs, which means you have to understand the implementation details of what you're actually testing. But I would say for end-to-end -end testing, this same approach applies. The black box is just gonna get a little bit larger, right? So you're gonna have your Postgres and your database over here, but you also have like a UI. And you're going to be testing at the UI level if you're doing like end-to-end -end tests with Cypress or Playwright. And instead of endpoints, you're going to be loading up your UI. Your UI is going to be talking to your API. Your API will talk to your database and that will send back data. And again, you want to make sure that you're doing some type of black box testing because the more your end-to-end -end Cypress tests know about Postgres, the harder it becomes to refactor your code and make it more maintainable. So if you've gotten this far in this video, I guess the one thing I'd recommend is just keep it in mind. Should this test know about this thing my system is using? And if so, that's fine. If not, maybe add a layer of abstraction or maybe try to test at a different layer, maybe hopefully a public facing API so you can set up the data and then test it at a later point inside your expect statements. All right, that's about it. By the way, if you did enjoy this overview, be sure to check out my newsletter. I never send out any emails, but I do plan to work on a backend REST API course where I'm gonna show you how to build up a production level REST API. I'll be talking about testing, all the good stuff, Postgres, SQL, just so you guys can get your feet wet of building out a REST API. But I'm gonna actually try to walk you through everything I do so that you guys can follow along. All right, have a good day and happy coding.